Data types can get a little confusing and they can also cause you a little bit of trouble in Python. So we need to go over them. There are several variable types that we'll learn throughout the semester. Right now, we're going to start with four. Okay, so the four variable types that we're going to start with is a string, which we talked a little bit about last time, but a string is enclosed in quotes, can be single or double quotes. And a string means the value of that variable is exactly the characters that are in those quotes. No more, no less, nothing, they don't represent something else. It is just that. It is literally a, those characters. Some people call them string literals for that reason. They are literally those characters. An integer is any number without a decimal. Integers are distinct data types from what's called a floating point or a float. A float is any number with a decimal. They are different animals. You can add an integer to a floating point. The result of that is a floating point because it will have a decimal, even if it's 0, .0. So these are just different data types that you need to be aware of. And then Boolean is simply true or false. And it's you need to be very careful because... Boolean values are capitalized like this. So x equals true. Let me go lowercase on that. x equals true. Okay, that is not the same thing as that. Notice it gets underlined because... True doesn't mean anything if it's all caps. Same with all lowercase. Doesn't mean anything. This is also different. The string true that I've put in the y variable is not the same as the true Boolean value of x. x means literally true or false. Y is a string containing four characters, capital T-R-U-E. It doesn't mean true or false. But here is the catch, okay? And you, this will get you later, so I'll have to remind you again. It's okay. It gets all of us. Y, because it contains a non-empty, non-zero value, is also true in the Boolean sense. So if I do a test to say whether y is true or false, Python will tell me that it's true, even if I write that. So it's both false, the string, and true in the Boolean sense. What things are false other than this? Well, a null value, which I can't write here, but a zero is false. There are a few other values that are false that we won't get into. But anything that, a variable that's empty, a variable that's zero, or a variable that is Boolean false, will all register as false if I do a Boolean test on it. Does that make sense? It's kind of logical, right, if you think about it? But a lot of times we will get tripped up by some of those things. So it's really important to know what's going on. I want to introduce you to another function right now. And if you forget the functions or the details of these functions, you can get these from Canvas. There's a function reference inside Canvas that will, that will 
show you all of this information. But the type function tells us what what type of function or what type of variable, what type of data is in a variable. So all I have to do, and there are a lot of parameters. Parameters are the things that we put inside. The parameters are what we what we use to tell the function more information. Okay, so in the print function that we that we talked about, the parameter is what we put inside the parentheses. It's the string hello world that we put in for assignment one. So the type tells us what what that variable type is. And so if I wanted to, I can use that to find out what type of variable something is by doing this. However, if I run this, it's not going to do, oh, that was my old program. Sorry, I ran the wrong thing. There we go. It's not going to do anything. It finished with exit code zero, no errors, but it didn't do anything. Why? Anybody want to, does anybody know why it didn't do anything here? I will tell you this, it did exactly what I told it to. Yes. You might be onto something. Yes. Yeah, I'm not I'm not telling it to do anything and specifically I'm not telling it to do anything with the result from this function. This function tells, returns, it sends back something. But I didn't tell it what to do with what it sent back, right? I could say something like result equals type of x, and then I could say print result. Okay, so there's the result. And this is actually a string. This, this returns a string that tells us that it's a class and that it's a Boolean variable. So X is Boolean. What this program says, if I'm reading it line by line, is line one says, set X to the value of true. On line three, it says, return the type of X and put that in the container called result. So put the put put the output of this function or what this function returns inside the variable called result. And then on line five, it says print whatever's in that container called the result. Make sense? Now we can see why it didn't do anything before, because I wasn't doing anything with that string that that function returned. Another way to do this, a shorter way to do this, with fewer variables, is to do this. And what, I, what that's saying is, take the type of x and then pass that to the print function as its argument and print that out. And so that's something you'll see. You can put functions inside of functions in Python. So the type function tells us what type of variable something is. If I do a string, okay, and I run that, it comes back as a string. If I do a float and I run that, okay, so it tells me it's a float. Here's an integer, tells me it's an int. If I do that, 10 divided by three, what is the result 
going to be? Right, a float, because it's a decimal. So if I print the value of x, okay, and it, it rounds it out to whatever place that is. Yes? Yeah, and and you can use that to test whether a variable is the right type. Let's say I wanted to avoid an error if I was doing math with two variables. I could test to make sure that they were a float or an int before I added them together. Because if one was a string, then I would have a program crash. So that's one way of checking for errors. Okay, so that is the type function. Very, very useful.